Cool. So we are live. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Shift Success. Um, we have been doing a series of uh, live videos recently due to the strange times that we find ourselves in. And uh, I am joined by a phenomenal person today. Uh, this individual joined Shift Success last year on cohort three. Um, and um, she has, again, grabbed business by the, the balls. She has started business without no experience or credibility. Um, she has had her own battles with being clinically depressed. Um, and as a result, has came out the other end and come off medication. And she's going to be sharing with you a bit about her story, uh, a bit about her challenges, her wins, and hopefully going to inspire you and empower you going forward. So without any further ado, um, ladies and gentlemen, Victoria McDonald. Victoria, how are you? I'm all right. <laughs> thank you for your time today uh really appreciate it we've got uh we've got connor who's tuned in we've got gareth we've got katie saywell we've got um gareth bartholomew and we've got gareth dickinson tuned in so we've got a few people watching and if you are watching guys don't forget to like um drop some love hearts or something so we, we know you can hear us and if you're watching back on replay please do type in replay. And of course, if you've got any questions, please do go ahead and ask them. Um, so Victoria, for those who don't know you, um, please share, you know, <laughs> you know, who is Victoria McDonald? What force are you from? Um, and what do you do in that force and how long you've been there? Okay, so um, hi everyone. I've been a police officer for uh, nearly 13 years now. Unlucky for some, not for me. Um, I started off my career in Northumbria, uh, Newcastle upon Tyne. I was a PCSO for uh, 18 months because they weren't currently recruiting. And then I got in on the next uh, uh, recruitment from that. And then about seven years ago, so I was a response officer in uh, Newcastle. And I worked in each um, four of the areas um, and I actually loved it. Um, had some great time, great crack with them. Um, some like really good people but um for personal reasons um i decided to move um in 2013 and i originally applied to the met uh because my partner at the time he wanted to move down south and um he'd previously been in the met long story anyway i won't go into it um but so i had my application to the met and i suddenly thought i don't want to work and live in london and stuff so i looked at the home county's forces um i've always loved brighton it it's just right up my street. They were recruiting, so I stuck my application form in, moved down here. I did six months on response in Brighton City Centre, eye opener. And um, <laughs> then I moved to the response investigation team, so still uniform, but dealing with um, all the people in custody. And then in November 2019, I moved to the safeguarding investigation unit uh, in Brighton City Centre. So we deal with uh, the most vulnerable, the most high risk um, adults and children. Um, and all the sexual offences. So heavy, heavy stuff. Wow, wow, awesome. So thanks for sharing that. Um, so with regards to um, business, you know, you, you've joined Shift Success Cohort 3. Um, yeah. Why did you start thinking about business in the first place? Uh, like I said, I mean, I, I joined the job back in 2007. And um, it's very different to what it is now. And when I joined, there was still like a bit of the old school cops about um and yeah just i mean everybody in this group will know the budget cuts etc everything got watered down the job became harder i just started to gradually fall out of love with it and i got a bit of a second win when i transferred down to sussex because you know it was a new force i mean obviously like the same job but a different force so that kind of like kept me okay for a while and um yeah just i, I was struggling with you know all the extra work the lack of people and um yeah then then I got sick and things started to change. That was that was the that was the start of it back in January 2017. Okay. And is this the depression or uh no, so um I I've I've always struggled with my mental health. Um at, surprisingly after joining the job, and I was 27, 26 when I when I when I joined the job. Um, so yeah, that was that was a bit of a bolt out of the blue, and I'd struggled with it. And you know, at first I thought, you know, I don't want to take meds, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because there is that stigma in the job. Um, and eventually I gave in. Um, and yeah, so it's it's been a bit on and off. But yeah, um, and then around 2016, um, yeah, I, I I started. I had to go to the doctor and say, look, 
I need I need to go back my med. Wow, wow. Okay, okay, awesome stuff. Um, so now I know what you do. I know what you do in business. If we was gonna if we was gonna meet each other, I don't know, in, in a bar, um, how would you um let me know what you do now in business? Okay, well, obviously, I'd have a Prosecco in my hand, which I don't have now, because I thought that would be maybe a little unprofessional. But, uh, yeah, um, so I'd say, hello, I'm Victoria McDonald. I am the owner and founder of Cork & Colour Eclectic Interiors, based here in sunny Brighton. And we transform homes for professional, busy people um, in order for them to reflect their personality and increase their happiness and well-being amazing amazing stuff awesome awesome okay so um who is your typical customer then you know who is it obviously people who own a home but you know what type of individual is it really yeah so um normally busy professionals and i've, I've gone for that because this might sound really bad but you know they're going to have the money um but also they're, they're busy they, they want to outsource it they, they they don't want the hassle they don't have the time um and you know, they, they, they do a variety of jobs, but basically they have like absolutely no clue on on colour or or what to put in their house or even what they need in their house. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's it's just like educating them and um, basically showing them like what they want and, you know, bringing them out of their shell a bit. Amazing. Amazing stuff. OK, so what other kind of problems do your customer have? You know, is it obviously you mentioned they don't know what to do. Was there any other problems that you found? And um, the, the three main problems are they don't they don't have the time because they've got like you know busy professional jobs, and um, a lot of them are like oh yeah I've been meaning to get round to this for years, um, and you know think oh I'll do it at the weekend and then it's a couple of years down the line and they realise that they still haven't done it and they've been living in the same bland boring interior that isn't inspiring them or it isn't making them feel you know welcome or homely, um, and. If, if we're not like stimulated at home visually or with like comfort, then that actually has like a really negative effect on like our well-being and indeed our mental health. I mean, you can see here I've got like an orange wall in the background and I actually painted, I used to have it grey. Then when I started to get into my colour psychology more, I realised that grey is actually really draining, depressing colour. So I slapped on the happiest colour I could find and it has actually really worked and it actually like lifts my mood. So wow. that's the kind of thing that I like that I like to educate people with. Amazing. So so you for those who are watching in inside our co-op community, Victoria's dubbed the Queen of Colour. <laughs> and um, you know, she as you can tell, there's loads of colour around her. I want to go down that route. I want to talk about um the psychology of colour. So yeah, um, you've got orange behind you. I love the colour yeah. orange. What does like orange make someone feel? Orange is energetic. It, it's happy. A lot of people think that yellow is like the color of happiness because that's the sun, but it's it's not. Like with orange, you get the best of like red and yellow, so you get the, the warmth, the red, but you you get the the happiness of the yellow. So it's it's just like a really positive, energetic color. And I I mean I can't look at my walls and like not smile. So yeah. Amazing. Okay. So what what about blue? Talk to me about blue. So blue is um blue is a very cool color. Um, but it's actually the world's favourite colour. Um, you know, it's a, a lot of the corporate and media will will use that. You know, Facebook's blue, Twitter's blue, LinkedIn's blue, and and that's because of the psychology behind it. You know, there's people think, oh, you know, they probably just picked a colour. It's not. There is like you know, science and psychology behind it. And um, blue is very um, trusting, um, uh, and it's. Uh, it denotes security as well. I mean, it can be quite cool, but then when you mix it like with, you know, purple, that makes it a bit warmer. So that's the thing about colour. It's not just, you know, the seven colours of the rainbow. It's like all the shades, the hues, the tints. And, and a lot of people, when they think of colour, they'll think of like the rainbow, but there's so much more to it. I'm sorry, I could talk about it all day. So I'm gonna <laughs> you can, it's amazing. It's your passion, right? It's, um, it's, yeah, it's your passion. Yeah. You're probably yeah. going to hate me now, but what is your favourite colour? Oh God, I knew you were going to ask that. Um, so oh, it's, it's hard to pick a time because colour like is very influenced by my by my mood and, and by everybody else as well. Um, so at the minute, I'm actually like really loving pink, um, which a lot of people think is like a really girly colour. But I've noticed that since this lockdown, I've been really attracted to it. And that's because it's got like really nurturing mm. uh, and like a playful, youthful feel. But if I had to pick one, it would be teal. And I know loads of people will be laughing at this now because there just seems to be a teal explosion. 
in the uh, in, in the cohort group. Um, <laughs> not 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 down to me. It's like other people are doing it. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But with teal, you get the um, the good properties of green and blue, and it's a really luxurious color. So if I had to choose one, that would be it. But I hate you for it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I bet you've seen, you know, since lockdown, um, a lot of people are jumping on Zoom and, you know, a lot yeah. of people haven't got, I mean, look at mine. I've got all white in my background. I bet you, you're dying to get your hands on that. But, you know, have you found that that's a common problem where, you know, a lot of people are actually ruining their, you know, almost reputation by having this not so much professional background, perhaps? I don't think it's so much about professional. I think like because everybody seems to have gone on video at the minute, I think you really need to take this opportunity to stand out. I mean, loads of people might be watching this and going, oh my God, that is like so busy. You know, I've got like palm print, palm print, print. <laughs> um, but you know, that's like why I'm quirk and color eclectic interiors. And that's the thing, like what this business course has taught me. I know I'm going slightly off topic. But it's like, you know, when you find your niche, you'll find your tribe. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to do boring, sorry, boring, bland, beige. I mean, that's not me and I, and I wouldn't do it well. So, and I don't have the passion for it as I do when I'm talking about colour. But yeah, I mean, I, I've, when I'm like on Zoom calls or, you know, especially group chats and there's just like a sea of magnolia and black, I'm drawn to like the colour and how people are standing out. And I do actually think that sometimes it can damage you know their reputation and their brand mm. cool okay um with regards to how you deliver your product so how does that look like let's say if i want to become a customer of yours how mm -hmm. would that process look would we jump in a consultation would you would we meet how does it happen okay so um first of all i offer like a, a free um what once they've you know expressed interest i offer like a, a free um up to 30 minute um call on the phone and um, just to like so that they can get to know me, I can get to know them because because business is about like working with people that you like, and that and that and that's the beauty of it. Being a police officer, you meet so many people you don't like and that you don't even want to be in the same room with. But but with business and with ne really niching down your business interest, you know you're working with people that um that you have loads in common with. So after the first call, um well before you know lockdown and stuff happens, I like to do it. Um, in person so I'd go and do like a home visit um, and that's because um, in the past when I've um, when I first started and I did like a couple of um, you know cheaper like freebie gigs you know for, for, for testimonials and to kind of like you know hone my craft and um, if I I find that if I did them online um, I was I hadn't visited the space I didn't have a feel for it and, and that's that's a big part of my um, ethos it's like I you know how how interiors feel how color feels not just like how it looks mm -hmm. um so I was fine I find that they were giving me like the you know not good measurements so the photos were really deceptive and stuff so I normally like to go and uh, meet them in person for the consultation and um, then after that it will be uh there's like different levels of packages, but it'll be mood boards. They get to visualize what the room's gonna look like, you know, uh, make whatever changes that they wanna do, you know, 3D, 2D, four pla floor plans, not four plans. Um, and uh, yeah, then basically, um, if, you know, they're like on, depending on what package, I basically do their shopping for them, which is amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, cause I could just like furniture and paint shop all day. So, you know, it, re it really takes the stress out of it. And I do this all to their budget and um, it takes the stress out of it for them. Um, and also I do what I love all day. So amazing. Amazing. So let's talk about your packages. You mentioned your packages. Talk to yeah. me what they, they are. So uh, the first one's like a, a consultation um, mm. service. So that's where I go along. I'll say, right, I think you should do this, 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 this and this. Um, I draft them up a report and they go, thanks very much. I now want to go and do that. So that's for the more kind of proactive people that need a bit of input and a bit of a push and a bit of, you know, kind of like, oh yeah, okay, now I've got the confidence because, you know, somebody's like basically said that I can. It's almost like they want permission. Um, then the second pack of job, it's um, basically like what, what I've described and uh, the consultation, the mid boards, the shopping list, and then they will go and get that and implement it themselves um, and then the um, last package has like an installation 
um, service as well. So, you know, I would like order the stuff for them. I would then go and install it. So like literally they, they wouldn't even have to be in the country and they could like come back and they would have like an Instagram worthy in interior. So it, it, I get to do what I like in all the packages, but it's tailored for what people need. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, I want to talk about your um, your first sale. So um, for those who have just tuned in, uh, Victoria started Shift Success with no business experience whatsoever. And now she's selling her packages at two and a half thousand pounds a pop, uh, which is phenomenal. I For those who are thinking about business right now and, you know, are really, you know, considering, you know, what does that, for, what that first sale mean to you? And how did it make you feel? Uh it, it, it was so good. I remember like, I literally, I got off the phone. And I was like, I have to call Alex. I have to tell Alex. He has to be the first person that I tell. Him. And I was like, absolutely up a height. Um, it, it was, it was brilliant because a lot of people think, oh, you know, sales will fall into the, your lap. You know, they don't, you have to work hard for them. But when you get them, it is like, it was, it was like winning the lottery, but it was like, I deserved to do it. And it was like, you know, there's my police salary in a month in one sale. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, just the, you know, it, it had been building up, building up. I'd been working really hard. I'd been getting really frustrated because I kind of thought I had one in the bag just before and then it all fell through. My confidence dipped. I thought, do you know what? Put your big girl pants on and start making some more phone calls. Um, and, you know, I, I got there in the end. Then the second one actually came in the same week. I was just like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah. You had yeah. two in the same week. I can remember. You had yeah, two in the same yeah. Week. They're 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 like buses, but you do like the adrenaline rush, and it it's quite like the adrenaline rush you get from the job. You know, when you're going like to an instant, you're all like, oh, you know, you're gearing yourself up for it. But it's it's just so much better. It's I can't oh, I can't describe it. <laughs> oh, amazing! How does it make you feel that you now get to work on your passions? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I kind of half answered this question already, but um, like I said before, it it makes me feel like me. I've, I, you know, I, I I completely lost my way. I I was wondering what the meaning of life was, what I was actually doing, why you know I wasn't happy and stuff. Um, and wh when I was sick, I actually did a lot of thinking. Um, then I decided that I wanted to be in business. I wanted to um, be my own boss. I wanted to do something that like you know made me happy and made me want to get up in the morning because it you know it was it was such a struggle sometimes I didn't not want to be here I, I never felt like that but but you know there, there were so many times I was like you know I could I could kind of like take it or leave it type thing and you know I, I know that's a lot of uh, that's very common for people and I hope that if somebody's watching this now and they they're feeling like that they can look at me and you know genuinely this is me a couple of like two two years on but like oh my god I'm absolutely loving life you know I'm really animated I'm like really passionate about what I'm doing and stuff um and yeah it, it, it makes me feel alive it makes me it makes me feel excited it no oh, it's amazing no it's an inspiration I'm <laughs> No, I can tell, you know, and you, you have come a long way, you know, you, you, yeah. you were down, you were, you know, you're having bad days and you, you're taking medication and now you've, you know, you've come out the other end as this, you know, you, you're back who you are, you're Victoria, um, which is amazing. It, it's great to see you like that. And, you know, I'm sure those watching who have got, you know, had been through depression as well, you're going to inspire them to, you know, yeah. make positive changes in their lives. Um, yeah, I was, know, on, um, I was on Satellapram and um, for for ages and I just I just want to say now that being on shift success and like you know starting my own business and stuff within eight months so bear in mind I'd been on them for like three years on on this stint um because you know I, I'd been on them before um eight months in I, I I came off them and that's like five months ago mm, wow that's nice amazing it's an inspiration I, you know I've been through depression as well and it's I've been there and it's and loads of cops have been through there as well and um you know you're going to inspire them so congratulations on that first of all thank you it's amazing it's amazing um why do you, know, you mentioned you wanted to go into business why didn't you think about getting another job um I think I'm quite outspoken I'm quite opinionated and I'm always very wary of you know other other people's feelings but I am not a yes person I you know supervisions 
in the past have, have seen me as, you know, the, the problem child that won't just, I, I just, I don't want to be a number. I don't want to be just another employee. I don't want to have my wages capped. I don't want like, you know, my ambition to be stunted. I, you know, the, the world's my oyster. Um, I've, I've learned that now and I just, I, I can't imagine working for anybody else and being told what to do when I've like now got this vivid imagination of, of my own, basically. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, what do you think, you know, because you've done amazingly well, but w- what are some of the challenges that you, you've been through, um, whether these are mindset or, or business related? What, what are some of those? Yeah, my my mindset was, was the biggest thing. It, it held me back for far too long. Um, you know, it, it, it took something for me to press the big red fuck it button and go right. Um, I remember that was in October. Um, I bought myself a ticket to the shift Sith quick start day for the January as my Christmas present to myself. Um, and, I, and I went there and I was just like, whoa, it was, oh, it was just like this, this whole, whole new world. It was like Narnia, but it was achievable. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the original question. <laughs> no, I mean, what are some of the challenges that you've been through? You mentioned mindset. Is it just like, you know, thinking differently or? Yeah, I I, I think as as cops um, or, you know, um, perhaps in the NHS uh, and the other emergency service, we get so institutionalized. We get so dragged down by all the red tape, by by everything. And I, I just needed to... Um, strip that all back and you know really focus on my mindset um you know I I had all these doubts I was scared I didn't think I could do it you know I had no previous business experience that was what was really holding me back and I thought well they're doing it and they're doing it and they're why can't I do it um and yeah um just gradually started to to gain more confidence um came out of my shell a bit more because with the one that I'd retreated into because um I used to be like I, I am now so um uh but what I found was really good to help with mindset was reading mm. I I love reading but over the years you know I made excuses or oh, I don't have time or I'm too tired or you know whatever but since since joining since last year I think I've read like 25 books now mm. and I, I mix it up uh, you know mindset books business books um and you know interior design books and stuff and you know by by giving that feeding that knowledge into your brain and stuff that would that will allow you to make your own decisions and see you know what what you can achieve amazing amazing stuff and as long as i've known you um you ha- i've not heard one excuse come out of your your mouth at all you know I, I yeah i literally haven't i can't think of one um which i think is a quality that successful people have you know we have all things going on in our lives but you push on regardless right um you know you've come a long way you've you've worked in the job for 13 years you've had no experience you've gone into business battled with your demons you know you've been clinically depressed you've come off antidepressants you're you know you're making sales at two and a half thousand pound a pop you know you're working on your passions now and you know it's emotional for me to see this because it is i know how much it means to you yeah you know, what how do you feel about your future now uh um excited uh like i said before i've, I've got a reason you know I'm, I'm i'm still in the job and i i don't know how long i will be in the job for but And this is actually quite an interesting point. What I've learned on the course, and because I'm happier now, I'm able to deal with the job so much better. When they throw shit at me, instead of just like, you know, getting like, you know, piled it on me, I'm like, won't be forever. You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel now. Um, But, you know, I I now believe that I can do it. Whereas before it just always seemed such a pipe dream. Um, And, you know, I I was was quite lucky because I, I took some time and I, you know, because of life events and stuff, and I worked out what I wanted to do. And I, I know there's a lot of people watching that won't. Are you still there, Alex? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm okay, sorry. You just, you just like kind of like were really still. I thought I was oh, intensely God. listening. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know that there's a lot of people might think, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't have a passion, you know, like Vicky does or or whatever. But there's um, 
people on, on my cohort and the other cohorts that started with like absolutely no, no business idea. Like my, um, and that's the thing, like on the cohort, I've made like friends for life. And I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, um, Kate, Kate Rain, got a name dropper. There you go. You got a name drop, Kate Rain, if you're listening, accountability buddy. No, she's, she's on late, but she's going to listen later. Okay. But, um, you know, she started, she knew that she wanted to make changes, but she had no business idea. And then like, I think it was a couple of months in, she had a business idea. A couple of months after that, she had you know, her, her first sale and it was a massive one. And she was like, she, she said to me, oh my God, I, I, I can't believe it. Like I didn't even have a business. I didn't even have a business idea a couple of months ago. Um, so yeah. Awesome. No, it's awesome. What's some of the, so what's some of the skill sets that you've transferred from being a police officer into your own business? What, what do you think some of those attributes are? I, th- I think as police officers, we do not appreciate our skill sets because we take them for granted. And I remember listening to you at, at you know at the time going you know they'll be really handy and I was like mm, not <laughs> sure, um, but you know I think I think the biggest ones are resilience and problem solving, and um, you know business is about solving people's problems whether they actually know that they have problems that they need solved or not, um, and then the resilience to you know deal with the knockbacks to you know pick yourself up when you don't get like you know your first deal and 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 to, and to keep going. Um, and you know, there's there's probably loads loads more, but I I think those are the two main ones. Amazing. And for those who are, you know, you've got a family, you have also got you know a full time job, you've got a growing business, and you find the time. And this is what you know, you have no excuses that come out of your mouth. And you know, for those listening who are trying to figure out, you know, how can I make this work? What kind of advice would you give to someone who's you know got a family? They've you know, they've, they've got a business or they've got, or they want to go into business and they've got a job. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be quite harsh, but I think you, you've got to make yourself accountable. You've got to basically listen to the excuses that, that you're telling yourself because it's easier to do that and stay in your comfortable rut then pick yourself up and go, now I'm going to go after this life that I want, the life that this person has, the life that that person has. And um, yeah, I mean, you've got to make changes. You've got to make sacrifices. I work full time. um, And when I say full time, I'm talking like probably more 50 or 60 or weeks, um, you know, not voluntary overtime. Um, you know, I've got a partner, I've got two stepsons that, yeah, aren't here all the time, but, you know, when they are here, it is like a, a, a tornado. Um, but I, I, I think the big difference, and, and people have always said this to me, because, like, over the years, you know, I've made candles, I've done crafts, I've done all this kind of stuff, and they're like, oh, baking, and they're like, how do you have time to do this? I said, well, what did you do last night? They said, oh, I sat and watched TV when I got in from work, and I said, well, I didn't. Mm. Mm. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I I appreciate that you know people need escapism, they need downtime. I still give myself plenty of that, but you know there's more hours in the day than you think. And if you don't think that you have enough hours, then get up earlier. And and that's a big thing. So I used to be a massive night owl, but you made me like get up like early, like just start <laughs> like half an hour a day, an hour a day, and like build it up, and then it'll become a routine. It'll become a habit, and you'll start doing it, and you'll realise like how much time you actually do have. That is amazing advice and completely agree with everything you said. That's powerful advice. And it's, you know, it's so simple to do, but it's also simple not to do. And that's why I believe a lot of people don't do it. Um, well, it's easier not to do it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, for your future now, you know, where do you, where do you see Quirk and Colour? You know, where do you see your business vision? Um, so obviously, like, I want to help as, as many people as I can to transform their homes to, to make them happier because... And that's the thing. I, I've done it. I, I know that it works. You know, I, I want to help other people. And that's the thing, because everybody in this job, everybody, well, everybody has different reasons for joining. But essentially, you want to help people, but you can do it now in, in different ways. And um, I want to um, do workshops so that people can do um, like a day and I take them through the staff and, you know, it's a social thing and potentially online courses. Um, but I want to have um, a product range as well. So at the minute I do candles, hand washes, things like that, you know, on the side, but all on brand. Um, you know, that's like a bit extra kind of pocket money and stuff. 
Um, but yeah, I want to move into like um, soft furnishing, cushions, wallpapers, duvets, all that kind of stuff. Wow. I want to be like in people's houses all across the country, <laughs> all, all across the world. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I love it. And it's, I mean, just a side note, your candles are amazing. I, I've been a customer of Victoria and they are very, very cool and smelly nice. So um, yeah, Victoria, with anyone watching this who, you know, may be depressed or, you know, maybe, you know, stuck in the job and they want options, um, what's one bit of enlightening advice that you can give them from a mindset perspective that will really just help them shift their mindset? I think just just be honest with yourself. You know, are, are you making excuses? Because if, you know, if, if I can do it, if I can pull myself out of that hole and I realize that people have different levels of depression and stuff, and I wasn't like at the very bottom end of the scale, but I was probably about middle. Um, you know, just, just be honest with yourself, but be accountable. Try and work out like what you want. And then when you realize what you want, make a plan. How are you going to get it? Um, one of the, one of the best things I did, and obviously I make mood boards for my business, but in um, in in the um, accelerator program, one of the first things I think we did was ha- had to make a like a, a mood board, uh, like a five year plan. I can't even remember what it was called now. Sorry, vision board. Um, yeah, um, and oh, I loved that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still have that in 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 my um, home office and I, I still go out and look at it because it's really good it, it reminds you what you want and it puts you back on course you know for trying to get it so I, I would definitely recommend it you know people do that or, or write things down you know make a diary and then like look at it and go oh I wrote that two months ago and I'm no further forward. Why? Start asking yourself the hard questions because nobody is, nobody will do it for you, and nobody shouldn't do it for you. Um, but you, but you can do it. Amazing, amazing advice. Um, Victoria, where can people find out more about you, your business? Where can they connect with you? Where they can reach out to you? Um, so I've got the website um, www.quirkandcolor.com. Um, mainly on Facebook and Instagram um, at Quirk and Colour Interiors, all one word. Um, and is there anywhere else? <laughs> Google. <laughs> yes, Google, Google my business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, th- those, are, those are the main ones, um, Instagram, Facebook on the website. Fantastic. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in for part two. And sorry about the uh, technical glitch with uh, the first part. Go back and watch that first part as you'll find out more about Victoria and her journey. And if you've got any questions from this, please do drop them below, comment, ask questions. If you watch on replay, type in replay as well. Um, and thank you for your time, uh, Victoria. Really appreciate it. No problem. Can I, can I just add, I know that there's a couple of people in the group that are... Uh, maybe thinking about doing interior design please just reach out and contact me and that's the thing about like this community there's no egos there's no um you know standing on top of like people um you know like kind of like you you get in a job so um or if anybody wants to speak to me about anything like mental health whatever um just just um uh, send, send me a message Oh, amazing. That's very kind of you. Um, so yeah, thanks you for your time, Victoria. Um, That's thanks right. guys for watching. Uh, we'll be doing more of these as we go on. I think we've got one tomorrow as well. Um, and as I've mentioned, please do reach out to Victoria if, and she's more than happy to help. Um, thanks for watching. Take care everyone and, uh, stay safe during these crazy times. Take care. Bye-bye.